Can we lift our hands to heaven and just thank the Lord for his faithfulness? Someone is saying, thank you, Jesus, for your wisdom, for your grace, for your power. Lift your holy hands and give him praise. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from nation to nation across the continents of the earth. Let's lift up sounds of worship tonight in gratitude for your faithfulness, for your mercies. Indeed, thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the glory, the glory forever. One generation will declare your praise unto another. From the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same, we declare that you alone are deserving of our praise, our honor, our worship. Someone go ahead, lavishly pour your heart in thanksgiving to our King, our Maker, our Ruler, our Judge. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for power. Thank you for your grace. Abundance of grace. The gift of righteousness. Thank you. Thank him for this year of open doors. Indeed, you have open doors. Marvelous openings. Marvelous openings. Marvelous openings by the Spirit of the Living God. Is someone still pouring his heart in worship? Be like the woman with the alabaster box. Pour your heart, your all, your everything. Let your tears join in the worship. Let your glory join in the worship. Let your strength join in the worship. Let your resources join in the worship. Let your mouth join in the worship. In the name of Jesus, to him that sits upon the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and power and majesty forever and ever and ever and ever and ever to the Lion and the Lamb, to our Maker and our Judge, our Redeemer and our Friend, the Light of the world, the Savior of mankind. We lift up sounds of worship tonight. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted. Be exalted. Let the people praise him, oh God. Let the people praise him. Shabalaka parakatosa pregata belekata. Shabrega beretos koto prendege beleke paruka sabrega de belekata. the kingdom in us is the power in us is the glory forever sing yours is the kingdom in us is the power in us is the glory I 
I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babuani Kamarka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Babuani Kamarka. Oh, there's no one like you. You are Yeshua. There's no one like you. There's no one. None comes close. Yeshua. Time now together. Yes. Father, we pray tonight that you will accept this sounds of worship coming from the depths of our hearts, expressions of gratitude expressions of honor expressions of love expressions of faith expectations rising in our worship we know that you have come tonight to do us good and i pray that your spirit will have unrestrained access to our minds our bodies our spirits our destinies until we become until we become portraits of your expectation. Tonight, oh God, we pray that you take over this service. We have come to encounter your glory. Let none who has come here leave the same way they came. May we encounter the God of heaven. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The wisdom of God is what distinguishes men in this kingdom. If you access salvation, please sit down, please sit down, please sit down. If you access salvation and you do not access the wisdom of God, the potential of this God life you have received will never be manifest. And although you may be saved, genuinely so, your Christian experience will be far from the expression of glory. Let me remind you in this final service up front that our corporate destiny in Christ is that we eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God. Burn this in your heart and never forget that in our walk with God and in our dealings in this spirit life, God's goal for us is not just heaven. God's goal for us is not just healing. God's goal is not just prosperity. God's goal is that through our walk with him, we evolve, we become, we are changed until we become living epistles, manifestations of the goodness of God. It then means that my life and your life should eventually become explanations as to all that God is. If it is true that God is a good God, it should be captured in my life and your life. If it is true that God lifts, it should be captured in my life and your life. If it is true that God can turn lives around, it should be captured in my life and your life. Are we together? Your assignment is to believe God enough, listen please, to believe his spirit enough 
and blindly follow him with reckless abandonment knowing that his thought towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and an expected end i trust god with my life yes i do i trust god with my life I would never have been able to bring myself this far by myself, by my wisdom. Mm -mm. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise. Listen carefully. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Then he says, fear the Lord. Respect him. Reverence him. And turn away from evil hallelujah everything that you see that reflects God is a manifestation of his wisdom at work in the life of man it says all oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his marvelous works to the children of men there is something that God wants to make your life become there is something that God wants to make your life become. This is more than making you rich. This is more than giving you a car, a house. He wants your life to be a description of the glory of God trapped in the life of a man. That your life becomes an explanation to men that God is alive. This is beyond being a preacher. This is beyond being a businessman. It is our corporate destiny in Christ. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship. I like that. Recreated or created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before he preordained it. It's not a decision that just happened yesterday. He already ordained that we should walk in them. Whether we walk in the experience of it or not is a different discussion altogether. But that according to God's predeterminate counsel in his mind he intended for myself and you, all of us together, that we become living epistles, manifestations of the glory of God. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up you are exalted i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up one day they will look at you and say Saul that we know when did he become a prophet this man this lady this person who came from this family what changed and you tell them my life has become a manifestation of the glory of God don't mind where I'm coming from don't mind my yesterday that you know between yesterday and tomorrow something happened and now my life has become a living manifestation of the grace of God if you forget this, the devil would deceive you into living a defeated Christian life. Are we together now? When God preordained this destiny for you, it didn't matter to him what background. It didn't matter the limitations of yesterday. He has not changed his plans concerning you. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say yet the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Is someone learning today now? And not of evil to give you an expected end. You don't trust God to failure. You don't trust God unto failure. You don't trust God unto defeat. You do not walk with God unto a life of misery. Mm -mm. Temporarily, you may go through things that are unfavorable. The Bible already gave you an information. It says, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. It says, it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Our light afflictions, he says, which is but for a moment. It has timing. The pain has timing. God will not allow it go beyond the scope of its timing. Our light affliction, which is but relative to the days you have left celebrating God, your moments of pain is called a moment. Even if it's five years, it is still a moment. 
worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18 says, he says, for we know that, no, 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 you've, you've given us a different scripture. Please go back to that scripture. For our light afflictions now, that's right. While we look not at the things which are seen. This is your own assignment now. If you believe the verse before, your response is that you look not at the things which are seen. Your current condition. The pain, the limitation, the mockery of ignorant men. Saying what is the benefit of your serving God so far. You served him from January up until December now. Even at this final service, nothing around your life looks like the faithfulness of God. My Bible says, you have an assignment to look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. It says, for the things which are seen are temporal. The dictionary defines the word temporary as that which is subject to change under a certain condition. Not every condition, a certain condition. Under a certain condition, even Aaron's rod that is not planted to the earth can still board. And it is God that is exclusively responsible for defining the conditions because he's Lord of all. His very throne is an altar, an altar that insists that everything he says comes to pass. For God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent has he said it he will make it good do you believe that tonight in the name of jesus i welcome you to our final service for 2023 this glorious glorious year of open doors hallelujah I don't know about you, but just reminiscing on the faithfulness of God all through this year, I found myself almost feeling guilty asking for anything. All that I've been doing is just saying, thank you, Jesus. And if this is all we say tonight, it was worth our coming. Thank you, Jesus. You can never say thank you enough. Are we together now? Yes. God's servant will always say that when you become thoughtful, you will remain grateful. When you think enough, you will know that you have not said thanks enough. When people say thank you and you say it's too much, it's because they are not thoughtful. When you think meticulously, carefully at the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Sing it for me. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath One more time. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have been. All my life, all my life you have been so, so. right so God is going to grant us grace to be as fast as we can tonight hallelujah very quickly before we get into the word I'd like you to please help me celebrate a dear friend Pastor Mike Ako all the way from Bauchi so good to see you the Lord bless you bless you sincerely hallelujah and then I welcome uh, global family connecting for one last time for this service let's give them a big God bless you May the Lord bless you, bless you. You are connecting to the one service that will turn you into another man. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to give us a charge and that charge comes as prophetic instructions. It's a prophetic service. We are made in the kingdom on the strength of the instructions that we receive. Hallelujah instructions are very powerful without instructions there is no basis for obedience and every delivery in the kingdom is at the instance of obedience please listen carefully 
instructions are the basis for obedience you cannot obey nothing you have to obey what you have been instructed to do are we together yes john chapter 2 and verse 5 whatsoever he tells you to do he says do it there is no doing until he tells you so when god wants you to do and remember doing is connected to the manifestation of the glory of god Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the Bible says this is what the Lord commanded that ye should do and if your doing is complete then the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you so it starts with instructions then you obtain grace to do we call that obedience and when your obedience is complete then there is no limit to the manifestation of the glory of God instructions are very important in the Bible, people lost their thrones because they violated instructions. An example was the man Saul. Hallelujah. An instruction was given to him by God through prophet Samuel. And the people mounted pressure upon him and he violated prophetic instructions. And then when Samuel came to him, he said, No, Saul, you have done foolishly. You would have allowed me to come and offer these sacrifices and God would have established your throne forever. But now, on account of violating this, he says, your throne has been taken away from you and God will look for another man who can obey instructions. People were commended greatly in scripture on account of their obedience, obedience to instructions. If it be thou, he said, bid me come. And he said, come. He didn't tell Peter, come. He said, come. He did not mention Peter's name. The one who obeyed the instruction was the one who saw the miracle. Not the one who heard. Not the one who was a witness. The one who took a step of faith. Hallelujah. And so I felt very strongly in my spirit um, when Zari over the weekend, such a glorious time with God's people, our family there. Yeah, it deserves our applause. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap hallelujah and i gave them a few instructions there in closing that i just said strongly in my spirit to repeat um i think it's, it's mark 13 37 or so that um that should be mark 13 36 or 37 it says what i say to one let's try yeah what i say let's go to 36 i think it should be maybe i've missed it somewhere Mark 13, 37, what I say to one, I say to all. Hallelujah. Yes, what I say to you, I say to all. Other versions to say what I say to one. So when God speaks to one person, it is because he's talking to everyone. I want to give you a few prophetic instructions. I owe you a responsibility on that God to help your spiritual growth and your holistic development. And this we have done without any sense of laxity and carelessness and oversight god has granted us grace as wise master builders build such that you become a formidable believer a believer of stature furnished in every way and from every dimension first your spiritual life then extending to every aspect of your life hallelujah he says, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things, although ye already know them and are established in this present truth. Let me start by telling you something I've told you in this house. If you listen to the things that I teach you, you pay attention to the truths that you receive. If you turn this ministry to become a school of the spirit for you, and you make up your mind as a covenant to submit yourself to the truths that you learn. I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture. No matter what background you come from, no matter where you are currently, your life must become a sign and a wonder. It is true. Only a foolish student edits what the lecturer is teaching him, especially when he does not have results. Your assignment as a student is to trust the institution that employed the lecturer. Are we together now? Yes. Not placing value on the lecturer is distrusting the institution that brought him to work. 
there is a verification system in any serious institution that insists and ensures that there are quality lecturers that help the students become. When you go to world-class institutions like Yale, Stanford, Harvard, Cambridge, they have a very rigorous systems system of absorbing people to become lecturers more so senior lecturers when you say you're a professor of harvard or oxford or yale even by mistake you cannot be suspected to be a joker you can't bribe your way into that level perhaps as a student you can cut corners and do all kinds of things but the verification systems are too strict by the time you actually become a lecturer in those institutions the reason why you have global credibility is because you pass through a system that is insistent on standards are we together so when you hear the truths that you listen to every week i want you to know that a man cannot just think out sermons like this they are a manuscript they are a roadmap no matter how intelligent you are you cannot just bring up teachings like this that connect to themselves no it is not god thinking this sunday what do i teach you no there is already what you should become the professor who is training medical students already knows what they should become are we together now it is only a terrible and wicked teacher that keeps teaching every day and when they ask him what do you want these students to become he says well i don't know me too i'm, I'm let's keep watching no no there are lecture halls that are full of pictures to the students of what they will become those who were once there and they listen diligently and so while you are in that class you are inspired by the photos oh this great professor he once sat here he was once a naive student but he came with rapt attentiveness and he listened his way to greatness my prayer for someone is that among the many things that happen to you tonight is that you enter a covenant with yourself that I will listen. This stubbornness has punished me throughout this year. I think I should pay attention. Don't edit the formula from those who have results. No, it is pride. You see, when you become and you are accredited, then you can decide to say you were wrong. But until you become and until your results bail you, your assignment is to listen, trusting that those who have been mandated by God or by any institution to help you become, that they were trained by God. God does not recruit garbages. No, God does not trust um, unserious people to come and help and build someone of a destiny as qualitative as yours. No, God loves you too much to play games with your destiny. Your assignment is to listen. Don't just be a fan. I've told you, my dear people, Koinonia does not have fans. Fans don't have any inheritance. Nobody gives them anything. To fans, it does not matter who wins or who loses in a match. They are spectators and then they return with nothing. You see that? No. God does not come to visit fans. He comes to attend to people who are hungry and are thirsty. I said it in Zaria that the final days of any spiritual feast is the day for hungry and for thirsting people. The Bible says, Jesus said in the last day of the feast, if any man thirst, let him come. That you are here tonight is because God gave you the allowance to come as proof of your hunger, as proof of your thirst. Are you ready to receive now? We are made by the prophetic instructions that we receive. And it is important. I will just give you two or three very quickly. There's something else I want to talk about. I want to teach you something before. Um, so I, I will just rush this. I may not be as elaborate as I was when teaching Zaria, giving them these prophetic instructions, because there's something else that I want you to understand. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, instruction number one. Let's write. The first instruction that God is giving us tonight is to commit ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and prayer. Please write it down. The first prophetic instruction to our global family and to all who are connected to the body of believers, even at this period, after today, officially we're on break until I will announce the resumption shortly in January. 
it's important that whilst we are away from ourselves physically have this at the back of your mind that the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer is mandatory for the growth and the excelling of any and all believers acts chapter 6 and verse 4 the bible says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word so you must give yourself continually say continually not once a week no not twice a week not three times a week continually it must become habitual in fact it is safe to say the ministry of the word and prayer should become an addiction in your life that is a wonderful addiction it's not the type who will cast away that is the kind that is needed hallelujah that you are addicted like someone will be addicted to drugs or addicted to whatever it is they have become a slave to it when you become a slave to the ministry of prayer and a slave to the ministry of the word it's like the clay in the hand of a potter now you can be built and molded to become as intended by god say continually many of us do not pray some study read books but they do not pray i made that observation over the weekend Others pray, they do not study. Others study, but they do not pray. There is nowhere in scripture where the believer is given the liberty to choose between the ministry of prayer or the ministry of the word. It's wrong mentorship. You never are given the liberty to choose between prayer or the word. Are we together now? Yes. God, when he manifested as the word incarnate, he called himself the word of God, the logos of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. But then he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. The life of Jesus captured the relevance of a rich life of prayer and a rich life of the word. The, I think the most concise blend of prayer and the word, as I know and as I've studied in scripture, is found in Matthew chapter 4. The whole temptation of Jesus. I'm not teaching that. I've done teachings on that. But you will see that when Jesus was tempted of the devil, there was a healthy synergy between prayer and the ministry of the word that helped him to stand, survive, overcome, thrive through that temptation. And all through his earth work, we see the word, we see prayer. So give yourself continually to the word and prayer. Let me tell you the truth. It takes grace and discipline to be prayerful. It takes grace and discipline. Grace comes from God. Discipline comes from your will. Write it down, please. It takes grace and discipline to be prayerful and to be a wordful individual. It doesn't just take grace alone. The enabling grace comes from God. But the discipline, discipline here expressed as the staying power. It is not always convenient to pray. No. No. It is not always convenient to fast. It is not always convenient to study. It takes time to pray. It takes time to study. It takes time to do all of these exercises. But you are motivated by number one, your love for God. And number two, what happens to you when you engage this? Look up please, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you know that it takes time to cook a serious meal that you serve kings? You cannot cook a meal for kings in 10 minutes, no matter what you are rushing. You take the time, you want to do a proper three-course meal. They stay in the kitchen almost forever. But when they come out of that kitchen, you smile all through that meal. Are we together? They meticulously follow, make sure that everything is in place. There are certain restaurants where before you finish talking, the food is ready. And you struggle, this one is not done. This one is not done because they were in a hurry. It takes time. If you are not willing to give time, you cannot grow. It takes time to bath. I hope it takes time for you. I'm joking, I'm joking. Are we together? I, I joked one time on this in Zaria that there are people who go to bath and you are literally gisting with someone in the room from the bathroom. And the only thing you hear is just, wow water has been poured and the person rushes out and you're like what did you do that's it come on respect your body <laughs> hallelujah takes time give yourself continually to prayer and the word number two
invest time energy and resources in your health hmm. invest time invest energy invest resources in being and staying healthy and don't think this is just a casual statement people have died because of the neglect of this instruction invest time comma invest energy comma invest resources in your health everything that will leave you healthy is your assignment and in this end time is your business that includes eating that includes exercising as god grants you grace that includes staying away from information that pollutes your mind do you know that your mental state is connected to your health we have ignored this for many years in the body of christ but now we are learning again and thank god for christian experts who are giving the body a reorientation that your body can be healthy but if your mind is polluted your body will still pay the price the bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine but it says um, a broken spirit i think I, I hope i quote that correctly is rottenness to the bones or something of that sort most people are healthy most people are healthy in terms of eating well and whatever it is but they have surrounded themselves with negative information by nine o'clock every morning they have information enough to depress them for the day they watch nonsense listen to nonsense and there are people who are advocates of bad news they wait patiently for you to wake up as soon as you wake up they say i have Jesus," and you will think they will tell you jesus saves you will think they will tell you you have a greater tomorrow just to let you know that that thing you were expecting will never even happen again because the person who was in that office was removed overnight and like joe back to back you keep hearing sad news and at the end of it by 12 noon you are already as depressed as someone who is almost dying your joy was extracted as a result of all kinds of people make up your mind protect your mind protect your body is that a wise instruction say I shall not die one more time say I shall not die there is a responsibility component to longevity I made up my mind that I will not die. Oh, this thing I said, I said it in the presence of God. I said it in the presence of demons. I shall not die. But there can be death in the pot. I hope you know. You can eat yourself to death by careless eating. I challenged our family over in Zaria and let me borrow from something that I told them. Although God is bringing the body to a that level of maturity now until now it used to be very embarrassing for christians to talk about things like medicine and drugs and hospital because the advocacy before now is that once you talk about drugs and hospital you are not serious with god you are not learning the things of god it's not true it's not true there are higher dimensions in the spirit where you become so fortified by the word of god that you rise literally above the realms of sicknesses it is true this is, these are dimensions of eternal life. In, eternal life is in phases and stages. He said, I have come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. And let me tell you the truth. There are people on earth today who are walking in that reality. They have risen to a point where no divination and no enchantment. They have prepared their bodies. It is only when the assignment is done, they will live with honor, but not as a result of weakness. They have found something in the spirit that has given them security even in their bodies. But that is a gradual process. And that's why I believe God brought to us doctors, advancement in medicine to midwife our health while we keep learning God's ways until we become. Do not be ashamed. I'm speaking to our global family. Please, if you are sick and you pray and it looks like nothing is happening, don't be discouraged. Just have this at the back of your mind. I am a student in the school of the spirit. One day I will become. Take responsibility and go to a hospital. Let them diagnose you. Even if you want a supernatural miracle, know what is wrong first. Hallelujah. There are many people today who would not have died if they were responsible. We do a lot of funny things in church. We quietly go and buy drugs from a pharmacy. We swallow it and come and say, I've been, I've stayed how many years? What is there? Will you go to hell? What is the lying for? No. 
Eternal, <laughs> eternal life is at work in you. Whoever believes does not believe in that, that's his cup of tea. Everyone has his share of eternal life. Grow your own until the point where you have stature. I mean, we have a robust medical team at the back. Experts, and what not ashamed, I mean a responsible medical team. Yes. So I'm saying it now so that you take away that sense of shame. Oh, me, I, I've never ever seen a doctor. What is wrong with seeing a doctor? When you over depend on the things of the flesh to a point where you do not believe the word of God again, now there is a problem. Because the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Right? But to be spiritually minded, it says, is life and peace. Hallelujah. There are times where the, the report of doctors conflicts the report of the word. At that point, you are given the liberty to choose whose report you believe. But there are many times the report of doctors agree with the word. Are we together now? Yes. They look at you and they say, listen, oh, you have this. Do you know for simple vitamin deficiencies, there are many, many believers who have put themselves down. I gave Zaria an illustration. Permit me to use it here. Now, if you refuse to be attended to medically speaking and you break down and die before your time and if one million souls were connected to your destiny to be lifted by your becoming you have robbed those people because of pride versus you go to the hospital responsibly you are treated well then now you are healthy and you keep learning the ways of divine health which of them is wiser me i will not lie to you go to the hospital if you are sick I will pray for you when you are sick, but we are responsible people. I will visit you when you are sick if I have the time and God grants the grace. I will not be ashamed of it. We are becoming, it takes a while. Did you hear what I said? We are becoming, it takes a while. And so while you are growing, be patient with your growth. God is patient with you. That's why he keeps empowering the mind of medical practitioners to see that there are advancements in medicine. Don't die the death of a fool. Many have done that in a bid to feel spiritual. What is this pain I'm having? From January till November, it has refused to go. And you have refused to do anything about it. There are many preachers who preach on the pulpit and go back home and they cannot sleep. They are rolling. That's the reason why you find out people begin to abuse drugs, injecting themselves and doing all kinds of things because they have to survive. They want to give a picture of invincibility, whereas they are dying. Please take responsibility. Maybe this is a deliverance message for someone now. One of the things you should use this break to do is go and have a full medical checkup. Write it down. Write it. You are my people. Write it. Full medical checkup. Whatever that means, just write it. When you tell the doctor, he will explain it to you. Full medical checkup. Why are you afraid of checking yourself if you believe in God? Find an explanation to that pain. Find an explanation to that inexplainable dizziness. You stand in the sun, you are almost falling. You fell four times, you don't care. Don't wait till you fall not to rise again. Go to the hospital. This is called responsible Christianity. Responsible Christianity. Take your parents for medical checkup. Take them. Many of them will not ref they will refuse, but take them. Find a way to babysit them until they get to the doctor. Let them verify what is wrong with you. Take your children. A child is crying every night. And as a parent, I, I, now I'm a firm believer in the word of God. But you, a child cannot be crying for weeks and all you do is make a sign of a cross with anointing oil on his head and say, go and sleep. No, I believe in the power of the anointing. But let's be responsible. You don't like what I'm saying? Take it as a prophetic instruction. Full medical checkup. Write it down. From your head to your toe. Meet a serious doctor, please check. Is my heart all right? Am I breathing well? The doctor says, why are you doing that? Tell them we're instructed in koinonia. As a prophet, he said, wow, that's serious. This man of God must be serious. Absolutely, he's right. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. My dear ministers of the gospel, see a doctor 
go and see a doctor go and see a doctor if you are working in divine health medicine will not conflict it it will be clear medically are we together yes it will be clear medically instruction number three this is koinonia for you are you ready for number three take the time to build quality relationships and connect with existing relationships write it down take the time this period build quality relationships and connect with existing relationships there are some of you you have not seen certain people for a long time some of you have not seen your parents for five years as soon as we share the grace tonight go home <laughs> laugh but go home I will tell you why listen every time I talk like this you should know that I'm not speaking nonsense do you know that God forbid not to be a prophet of doom if your parents have five more years to live and you see them only once in two years you are going to see them two more times before they leave are we together now yeah build quality relationships use this break to edit your relationships who destroyed my life this year father i receive grace you strike them out of their life who misled me listen 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 who stopped me from coming to church that i insisted and i came and i was blessed you mark them not to condemn them but you are improving your life listen if you want to grow put aside sentiments love your destiny enough to go through a serious system of editing and that also means editing good people people do not have to be bad to destroy you hmm. prophetic instruction it's not an advice it's an instruction go back and sit down who helped me to know god more today now who encouraged me when i was weak i lost my job in march but there was a sister who was always calling me in the night insisting that we pray i told her about my rent and she divided her salary into half to give me how do you leave such a person no learn what works and stay there many of us do not know the difference between good and evil something is wrong because strong meat helps you to discern all people cannot occupy the same position in your heart there are people who help you know god every time you come around them you are discussing pro destiny discussions and that even includes elderly people there are elderly people when you come around when you see them they will motivate your mother your father help at the end of that discussion your faith is stirred up but there are people as soon as you get there when you leave you deflate all it's like everything you have been building just goes down love is a command relating with everybody is not a command you are given the liberty to love all men but select with the wisdom of a coach the team that you need to build to your life that takes you forward is someone listening now yes that also includes as much as if your children have not gotten to the age of discretion please parents take responsibility and help choose the kind of friends they have there are bad people today who are agents of darkness who come to destroy little children a small child who you call a small child will ask you a question as a parent that you cannot sleep where did you learn that from and they call the name of somebody everything under your house your roof should serve your god and anybody who comes with any strange god love them but tell them listen if i brought you from the village and i'm changing you here and you are practicing idolatry you are going back to the village let them say i i treated you bad no problem you don't like what i'm saying ba? invest in listen get to a point in your life where you start investing in quality people there is a difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. There is a difference between a visionary person and a non-visionary person. There is a difference between a kind person and a wicked person. Know the difference and begin to prayerfully piece together good people in your life. Hallelujah. 
Yes. Do that as a man of God. Ministers of the gospel have quality ministerial relationships. People who love you. You stand and they hold your hands to stand in integrity together. Not a friend that begins to teach you crooked ways of doing ministry. And you start well, as soon as you get into certain associations, you start practicing devilish things that are antichrist. There is a way we do this thing. Oh, there is something they can take you somewhere. There's a way we can wash your eyes to see. There is a way we do some things. No, no, please. You are hearing me. You belong to any association that is not of God. Obtain grace. Don't fight anybody, but live in peace. As a sign of your respecting your tomorrow. Are we together? And when you leave this place, for those of you who are traveling, beware of those who were in your yesterday. Because your yesterday is very different from your today. They will look at you with the lens of yesterday. Bros, you are back. We go to that our place and you say, no, I'm a child of God. Then they laugh hysterically and say, are you the first? Don't condemn them, but let that be your last time in that environment. You will not die if you don't see them. You can send them a text, I'm in town, may God bless you. That's it. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Separate your relationships into outer court. Hello? Inner court. Holy of holies. There are people who you should love generally, but they should never cross the outer court. There's nothing you can do about them, but keep them at the outer court of your destiny. There are people because of their love for God, their value and contribution to your life, they have access to the inner court. And I hope in your most holy place there is only one person there. Because if there is more than one person there, you are practicing idolatry. That most holy place is a position that only God, it is only the size of God that can fill that place. If money is there with God, remove money out this night. If titles are there, remove it this night. The most holy place was designed to be the habitation of the jealous God. The only one whose size fills that place. So every other thing that has transited itself from your outer court, your inner court, your most holy place, and God is somewhere trying to squeeze space with money, titles, a name, fame, remove all of them out this night and rearrange your relational life. Know who matters to you most. Love everybody, but not everybody is worth dying for. No. No. Are we together? Yes. This is very important. Invest in your relationships. Connect with existing relationships that have produced profit to your life. Let me tell you this. I have taught you and I will keep teaching you. We maintain relationships by fueling it consistently with gratitude. If you cannot contribute value, contribute gratitude. If you cannot contribute value, contribute gratitude. Somebody is always paying your school fees. You don't have any money to give the person back, but always say thank you. Remember? Gratitude. Gratitude. Honor. Now is the time when you show people gratitude. Gratitude. Talking about relationships, use this opportunity to tell people thank you. Let me advise you, ladies and gentlemen, do not be under pressure to stretch your finances beyond necessary as a way of trying to say I must buy hamper for everybody. There are too many good people in your life and you are growing financially. I'm not teaching you greedy people who agree with me quickly now because they don't want to give. I'm not teaching you to be greedy. Are we together? 
but I am saying there is a narrative in church that we must correct. You must not give me hamper to show you love me. If you are not yet there, pray for me. It is a greater gift than a hamper. So don't be under pressure, but tell someone thank you. You cannot buy a hamper of hundreds of thousands, but you can load your phone with 2,000 naira and send thank you to everybody. Thank you for what you have done. I want to appreciate you for making me love God, know God more. Send. That is your Christmas gift. And God will honor your heart of sincerity and gratitude. Don't wait and be angry and say, can you imagine it's Christmas? Nobody is even thinking about me. That is a message from your tomorrow that you are going to tomorrow alone because you are not investing in anybody's life. Are we together? Yes. Somebody should matter enough in your life to be able to tell them thank you. Send something home to your loved ones. Send something to your children, parents. Spouses, send something to one another. Children, send something to your parents. Preachers, even. You know, we men of God, sometimes we are always receiving. Pastors, do something to your people too. No matter how small. And then members too, do something to your leader. Don't just say, Amen. Thank God, we are finished now. Go, let God who called you help you. It's, I'm not saying you should do anything for me. No. But I'm teaching you is a very good, never watch a man bless you from January till December and wrap up that year without blessing the person. It's a good culture. I'm not teaching you to give me anything. Believe me. God has been faithful to me. But it's a culture you must learn. That includes your boss in office. Some of you are soon going on break. Go and get a hamper. I don't like the director, but you like your tomorrow. And you bring the hamper and drop it and the man is surprised. Why did you do this? He first suspects you because he's not used to people being kind for no reason. And then after one week he calls you. Then he starts telling you the story of his life. Because you have earned a right to move deeper in relationship with him. By January you receive an email that you have become a director. And people will say no, this lady must have done something. They are right. You walked your way by intelligence. To rise and scale to the position of a director. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Do not allow anybody who has played a significant role in your life without maintaining the relationship. And some of you have money. You are rich. Use your money to build relationships. Relational investment is greater than any other investment. It is because of relationships people go to heaven. It's because of relationships people go to hell. Don't ignore relationships. Are we learning? Connect with good relationships, quality relationships. Apostle, I'm not that kind. I don't visit people. Choose people to visit. Now there's no excuse. Visit someone. Surprise them. Go to their home. Just go and sit down. I just came to say hello. Wow. What do we do? No, 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 no. Don't bother yourself trying to do anything. Joke with them, play with them. How are you doing? Pray with them, carry a gift and drop and tell them you leave and you watch that widow crying. And you watch that person crying and say, no one has ever done this in my life. And God said, you did that for that woman? Get ready for the next level. These are the things we do in the spirit to rise. Is God helping someone? The days of eating alone that's what destroys people. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. Let me challenge you. Let your one naira, your one pound, your one dollar add a smile to someone's face. Invest in relationships. Number four. This is the most important discussion about the most important discussion. Go for an end of year retreat. I'm repeating myself, you have heard me before, but I will always drum it because these are ordinances that are fixed. Most believers are not taught that a retreat is part of the believer's process. Retreats are times where you set apart, you set apart time to be with the Lord, to be all by yourself, flogging it out with destiny. Listen carefully. A retreat is a time that is set apart, away from the noise, 
if God grants you grace and you are buoyant enough, you can travel somewhere, be alone with God. At any level, you can even use your house just away from the noise and distraction. Take a day, take it two days, take three days and spend with the Lord. What do you do in a retreat? Number one, thanksgiving. The first thing we do in a retreat is to personally, lavishly express gratitude to the God who has kept you. Please learn this. Believers must be taught. What do you do in a retreat? Number two, an honest appraisal of the current year, the year ending now. You do an appraisal of the year. This is the second thing we do in a retreat. After you are done thanking God, rolling before your maker, thanking him for all he's done, the next thing is you must appraise the year. And I've taught you the indices that you use to appraise your year. Your spiritual growth, your level of mental transformation, your level of health and wholeness. Are we together? Your relationships, your finances, purpose and, you know, destiny advancement. You gauge your life against these indices. Have I done well this year? What would I have done better this year that I did not do? What opportunities did I miss? What opportunities did I maximize? What instructions did I ignore? What was the price, the consequence? Are we together? Let me tell you this. When you are doing an appraisal of yourself, do not lie to yourself. Be sincere and honest, as transparent before God as you can be. Okay, this year, I lost a lot of opportunities because of carelessness. This year, from a spiritual standpoint, I was not serious in my prayer life. Not to feel condemned. It is between you and God. It's nobody's business. This year, had my highest rating in terms of spiritual growth. But as a father, I must confess that this year, I, was, I did not perform my fatherly role to my family as should be. I allowed my wife to be the person feeding us all through this year and I did not even tell her thank you. You're having a retreat now. Lord, forgive me. Don't feel condemned. Lord, forgive me. This year, I allowed my children, I don't even know where they got their school fees from. It's only God that saved them. They would have prostituted themselves. I take responsibility. A retreat is not the time to dance and ask God for more anointing. You appraise yourself first. After thanksgiving, appraisal. As a man of God, did I teach koinonia the best that I could? Did I help the people? Did I manipulate the people? Did I teach them truth? Was I sound in scripture? Is there something about my teaching method I need to change? As a CEO, go for a retreat. It doesn't matter that it's a secular corporation. Okay, have I paid my people well? We made so much gain this year. Did I share the honor? Did I increase their salary? Some of the pillars in my company, did I bless them? Or I just ignored everybody? I ate all the profit alone as a CEO. And the Holy Spirit tells you this is wrong. You need to change. Motivate your people. Encourage them. The security man who stopped armed robbers from killing you, he's still receiving 5,000 till now. You would have been dead, long dead. The man has a secret to all your office doors and all of that and he's not touched one naira. You are still giving him 5,000. He told you his wife has given birth. You are still giving him 5,000. Retreat. That's where you flog it out. As a man of God, I need to improve on my teaching. There's a lot of spiritual laziness. No. I need to step up. Maybe I need to go and meet another man of God. Have some time of discussion. Let iron sharpen iron. You see that now? As a ministry, I think we need to move to the next level. Structural establishment. As a businessman, in the place, you are appraising yourself. We had potential to have five branches of my business, but laziness and carelessness and fear kept me in one place. This is what you do during a retreat. Any great man, whether in the secular or in the faith work, who does not practice retreats can never be exceptional end of year retreats now generally speaking you shouldn't wait to, till the end of year before you do retreats you can fragment your life across various phases there are people who have retreats once every month they have retreats at strategic periods of their lives their birthdays their anniversaries but every believer as a kingdom culture 
one of the reasons why we give break you can imagine i told you already that a dear man of god confronted me one time and said apostle you're an interesting person how do you give a ministry this size break what if you resume and nobody comes you know we give breaks for these kinds of reasons to give you room because your relationship with god is greater than ministry if you remain faithful koinonia people and you are going down spiritually we're only playing games here you know that right so this is you and god now spending time with god spending time with family spending time building your destiny i want you built too not just the ministry built it is people who are built that can build the vision you believe that if a ceo goes to have two days with his directors or alone with god imagine what happens when he returns by january february that person would have surpassed ordinary standards now let me tell you the truth this is the reason why most africans do not thrive because we do not believe in this without trying to you know create any bias of regional biases one of the things that you learn from the west is that they they maximize moments like this they take the time they can travel somewhere to one village that nobody knows and you will see someone who is a multi-millionaire in a village somewhere just book an airbnb and sit down there asking serious questions these are the kind of people that jesus said they are not far from you know the kingdom because they are practicing all that is left is for them to be born again but as far as pro kingdom principles are concerned they are working in it let me challenge you for some of you you have never had a retreat don't be too busy for a retreat it's an attack there are things god has wanted to tell you he's been wanting to tell you for a long time but maybe you're being a worker you're being diligent as a worker will even distract you the vicissitudes of life now in that silence he can come to you and say since march i've been wanting to point something to you but you are too busy to hear now thank god you have given me time and one direction from him that leads me to the third what do you do in a retreat number three planning and resolutions for the next season i hope you i hope i've not lost you we're talking about retreats now go for an end of year a personal retreat what do you do in a retreat thanksgiving what do you do in a retreat an honest appraisal of the year you appraise yourself what do you do in a retreat planning and resolutions for the next season now you begin to plan how much do i earn how can i plan better how how do i need to you know walk my spiritual life i started this year as you know an ordinary staff now i've occupied a managerial position i have to design a new spiritual formula for my remaining spiritually vibrant this is where planning comes you plan what do you do in a retreat you obtain the doing grace there is a grace called the doing or the enabling grace it says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them it's not enough to just plan most of you have your books full of things you plan to do this year some of you did not do even one don't end a retreat just by proper beautiful planning no many are the devices in a man's heart the bible says however the counsel of the lord alone that shall stand and when god gives you counsel he also gives you the doing grace the doing grace when we started this year there are many things that god gave us an instruction that we do we did not know as, as yet how they would be done but glory be to god listening to him and obtaining that doing grace granted us the opportunity to do very great things for god this year let me recap again that a retreat is a time that is set about apart to be with the lord it's a time of renewal it's a time of refreshing it's a time to get direction for your life it's also a time of empowerment you are empowered by the spirit fresh anointing fresh grace you're a man of god for instance and you go for a retreat you'll be surprised what happens there you spend the two three days one week with the lord you come out like the eagle ready for next year ready with great fire ready with great grace hallelujah 
is it it is at times like this that we receive prophetic words that direct the body of Christ towards the next season you don't just sit down and guess what the prophetic word is um, which one have we used before okay we have used a, a shining year if we now say the year that um, what looks like what people would like you are playing games you will not see any performance because God is not a joker is in the secret place as you are stretching praying his voice comes this is what i want to do to the people and you receive it for yourself then you announce it in koinonia 31st december 6 p.m west african time on the dot all through our social media platforms the prophetic word for the next year is released and that's what guides us we walk based on times and seasons and there are people who don't believe in prophetic words for the year there's nothing wrong you know it's just their revelation how god has given them but as a ministry and as a global family god has so chosen by his wisdom to guide us giving us prophetic words for the year that become a compass because we walk in this world based on the law of times and seasons and god is not doing everything all the time are we together so go for a retreat say i receive grace one more time say i receive grace to go for a retreat let me plead with friends and families and spouses. Commit yourself to helping one another have that retreat. Don't just say a spouse wants to go for a retreat. You start shouting, the Bible says, what God has joined. Mm -mm. Explain, discuss, and say, and you as a spouse, don't just leave and nobody knows you have gone. They think you are missing. And then after one week, you say, ah, should I not be about my father's business? That was Jesus, not Mary and not Joseph. Hallelujah. When you are going for a retreat, we live an e in evil times. Let your loved ones know where you are going so that they know you are safe. They know the difference between a kidnap and a retreat. Don't put people under stress because you are alone with God. Because there are people who will hear messages like this and say, my own starts from this night. They won't go back home now. And their loved ones will be looking for them for a long time. Church people are very interesting people. It's good to obey instructions. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Shout a loud amen. amen. So when you have people around your life, don't ignore them. Let them know, okay, I'll be going for a retreat from this day to that day. This is where I'll be by God's grace. If you call me and I don't pick, don't, don't worry. I'm safe. I'm fine. I'll be spending this time with the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we together? Go for a retreat, oh. In the name of Jesus, please go for a retreat. I'm challenging you. This, this is, a, is a secret that has helped some of us. I don't know how my life would have been today without retreats. Give God time and you will hear him in a way that will surprise you. Give God time and he will give you direction. One direction that comes from that secret place will redefine the next 10 years of your life. Carry all your pain, carry all your confusion, carry all your burdens, carry everything to him. Cry before him and let him give you direction, let him give you help. Are you ready for number five? The fifth prophetic instruction. Share the love of Jesus with everyone around you. Share the love of Jesus. I said this one time and I'm repeating myself again. Share the love of Jesus. There are two ways according to scripture that we share the love of Jesus. One, by the preaching of the gospel. Number two, by giving. Please write it down. The two ways that we preach the gospel or that we share the love of Jesus. In preaching and in giving. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. It says, therein is the glove of God revealed in preaching. When you preach and when you give, you give people an opportunity to know Jesus. Please look up. Every believer in Christ is first a child of God, but number two is an ambassador of the kingdom. Are we together? And as kingdom ambassadors, we have a responsibility to see to it that the kingdom that we so lovingly represent is known to all men, especially the king of that kingdom. 
Don't allow the year to waste without someone knowing Jesus in and through your life. Don't allow the year waste without someone finding Jesus. Share the love of Jesus with everyone around you in giving for God so loved the world that he gave. Say giving. Some of you like preaching. The preaching part, you were smiling. You had giving. Your mother said, Apostle, don't say it. I will say it. <laughs> preaching and giving. What do you give? Everything that can make people's lives better. Advice. You know, this world's goods, like the Bible says. Let me challenge you. Organize a small welfare for someone in your little community. There are people within your community, some of them... Some of these people, they don't even know where they will get a meal from. If you can buy one bag of rice, 60,000, or how, I think I'm right, whatever amount it is, you put it in small bags, you meet them and tell them, well, I'm here to share the love of Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Or you can buy something for the children. You can set two days to do a Bible study program for children just to help them know the Lord. You don't need to have the name of any ministry. Are we together now? Yes. Or you can decide to just take a hundred thousand, send ten, ten thousand to ten strategic families that you know love the Lord and may not have capacity to and just tell them with love from Jesus. What a beautiful way to share the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. Make sure that you share the love of Jesus with someone. Share it with children, share it with your family members, share it with friends, share it with all kinds of people. Let them know that you are a Christian. Let them know you are a child of God. Don't watch people go to hell and say, I don't care. I will mind my own business. If they reject your proposal about Jesus, that's fine. At least give them a chance. That should be true for children. Some of you may send some welfare material, perhaps to a school somewhere. And just tell them this is with love this is just to show you that i love you everything we do for jesus i want you to know that it will be rewarded in this life and in the life to come do you believe that yes some of you may want to decide to bless maybe the security people in your office you just make up your mind that I will give all these people, I will buy one bag of rice and divide it and just call all of them. Don't just give people, say, take, take. No, it's not about giving. It's about helping them to feel the love. Say something before you give. Are we together? Yes. Let it not just be about money or bags of rice or groceries or whatever it is. No. Tell them something about Jesus. And that includes non-Christians. I hope you know you you know that that includes non-christians go and gather some children doesn't matter what faith what religion share the love of jesus with them help them perhaps your company can decide as a seed to take a day and give a 50 percent discount on whatever it is that you do and boldly tell them i'm doing this as a love seed from jesus amazing do it Sometimes it's not always about giving money. You can also ease the burden for someone. Are we together now? I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Someone must know Jesus because you were born. Someone must know Jesus. Utilize this time. Don't let the year end without bringing one soul to Jesus. It's a lie if you tell me there's nobody to be saved. I don't believe you. Everybody that is unsaved according to scripture is called a harvest. It's already a harvest. And I've taught you here in God's mind, the problem that God has is not the harvest, it's the laborers. The harvest is wide.
but the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. Some of you show kindness but preach directly to someone for God's sake. Sit with someone and start talking to him about his life. I just want to share a few thoughts with you about life and destiny. Do you mind? And the person says, all right, that's why. And you talk to the person. Let me tell you, today you see me as a great man, but let me tell you a little story. It was not always like this. Don't just walk to people and say, who are you? You are going to hell. No, don't. don't. I mean, come on. You, you are giving creativity. Don't harass people. They will take you to court. Yes, sir. We live in a time where people are very right conscious. Don't go and put yourself in trouble. No, there are, are very loving ways of introducing conversations that, you know, culminate in salvation. Tell them about your life. You feel inspired by my life. Let me tell you a little story. It wasn't always like this. I came from perhaps a dysfunctional family. You can use your pain. Every man's pain is his point of contact. Are we together? You go and you see a bereaved family, for instance, that's an opportunity to preach Jesus. Let them know that the Bible says there is hope beyond the grave. You start from there. At the end of it, you, you do a proper altar call. Don't be embarrassed whether anybody would say yes to Jesus. Or, I mean, so what? If nobody lifts their hands, that's fine. You planted that seed already. And sometimes there might be someone there needing salvation, but he will refuse. But that seed, have you ever preached to someone who got born again one year later without any other person preaching? It was that seed. It's called the incorruptible seed of the word. You just plant it and leave it there and watch what the Holy Spirit does. That person will not sleep day and night. What is this vision I'm seeing? Seeing myself in a crusade ground. I've always hated this church thing. I've always, don't worry, just leave them and God. You do your own preaching and walk away. If it is this God that we serve, one day you will see that person who will call you and say, where are you? Um, I usually don't do this, so you say, no problem, I'm listening. Uh, I still want you to tell me a little more about this, your Jesus thing, this Jesus church thing. No problem, you gladly say it. And you want to preach the gospel, you take away your ego. It will sting your ego. People will demean you on account of the gospel. Accept it with joy. This is the price it takes to love Jesus and to see the nations know him. Some of you may need to preach to your children. They are not saved. Gather them together and say, my dear children, let me talk to you about Jesus. The Jesus that made your father who he is today. Story, story. Then they say story. And you tell them, once upon a time, I was an idol worshiper. Once upon a time, there were incisions in our bodies on account of the gods that our fathers served. But then some missionaries came from America. Make it interesting. At the end of that conversation, you watch them cry. Because the Spirit of God, there used to be this placard we had in our home back in Joss. It says, Christ is the head of this home. The unseen guest at every meal the silent listener to every conversation very beautiful one more time christ is the head of this home it says then he says he's the unseen guest at every meal then he said he's the silent listener to every conversation including that conversation you are having with your children the spirit of the living god is there representing the presence of jesus bringing about conviction and while you are speaking, your stubborn child for the first time, under the influence of the convicting power of the Spirit. If you don't talk to them about Jesus because you are looking at their face, they will never be saved. This is an inner walk. Their face can look very hardened, but just trust the Spirit of God. I've been in this business of soul winning for a while and I can tell you, there are times you preach on a crusade ground and the people are looking at you as if just finish and go and sleep. But you trust the Lord. The moment you make that altar call, you will see sometimes some unlikely people, high profile people coming to Jesus. So while they were listening to you with their faces supposedly hardened, the Holy Spirit, beyond that veil of their face, doing a work within their spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So let me recap and then we'll go to one more discussion and then we'll pray. My prophetic instructions to you again. Number one, give yourself continually to the word and prayer all through this time. Number two, invest in maintaining your health. Invest in being healthy. 
go for a medical checkup learn all you can about the principles that make for healthy living especially for those who double as believers and medical practitioners i think they stand on a platform that gives a very a very intelligent view on how to live healthy and then number three make sure you invest in your current relationships and invest in building other superior relationships sustain the courage to edit on profitable relationships you don't have to hurt them but anybody who is not pro destiny pro kingdom pro spirituality pro righteousness you may need to lovingly draw the line and then rearrange your relationships everybody cannot occupy the same space in your heart number four go for an end of year retreat a time alone with god giving thanks a time alone with god appraising the year honestly and truthfully a time where you plan and make quality resolutions and then of course you obtain the doing grace empowerment in all its ramifications now i want you to pray in one minute and then i want to teach you something profound about sacrifice and then we'll take our end of year sacrifice and i speak over your life we we'll have to do this very fast go ahead and pray now that you know this thing up it says happy are you if you do them please pray these are instructions receive grace from god go ahead someone is praying Go ahead and pray. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me the holy ghost power rest on me let your grace this grace called favor rest on me rest on me let your grace this grace called favor, rest on me rest on me oh, oh, your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me listen very carefully listen very carefully many years ago I went to the Lord in prayer asking him the secrets that can really really cause a man to get into the heart of God because I knew that more than money more than anointing the real secret to becoming great in the kingdom is when you touch the heart of God I've read my Bible a bit and there were a few people in scripture who really touched God to his heart and his response to them was miraculous their lives changed men like Abraham men like David men like John the beloved there were people who did certain things that touched God to his heart men like the centurion men like Nicodemus there were people who really went deep beyond his hand and touched his heart that was where God began to teach me about the mystery of sacrifice believers I want you to listen please 
first Samuel chapter 1 and verse 21 the Bible says and the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow the man Elkanah as a priest he went with all his house not alone and went to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints the Bible says they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice something began to happen in my life I listened to Dr. Mudok Mike Mudok I've listened to many of the fathers that God has granted them grace they've been able to break through certain realms and I took out time to study because I really wanted to know this for myself and then I also wanted it for this great ministry and I began a journey with God and when I learned the power of sacrifice I remember God began to test me with certain instructions every once and again and I, I, I wanted to know what is it about sacrifice that touches the heart of God is it the money or the clothes is it your life what is it about the sacrifice of Jesus that touched the heart of God that translated to the salvation of all men what is it about the sacrifice of his willingness to lay Isaac down what is it about the sacrifice of Elijah that brought fire from heaven what is it about the sacrifice of one ancient king slaughtering his son and the Bible says an indignation rose up to heaven what is it about the sacrifice that happened in the days of Samson coming Manoah now and the angel rose through the sacrifice and went to heaven what is it about sacrifice that the Bible says a few people bound themselves and said they will not eat they will not drink anything until Paul was dead and I found out that sacrifice is a mysterious law in the spirit. A law that has been abused, unfortunately. A law by which people have practiced without understanding to their peril. But a law that if and when understood can produce a miracle out of anybody. This is a law that is respected among occultists and satanists. A spiritual law that is respected, a law that even heathenistic people respect. Sacrifice is one of the four pillars upon which love sits on. Now watch this. There are four pillars upon which love, the word love, which is the nature of God. The love of God rests upon four pillars. The Bible says, oh, the length, the breadth, the depth, the height of the love of God. And it says for the saints to know it. And this came to me by revelation of the Spirit. The four pillars upon which love sits on. Number one is called passion. Number two is called commitment. Number three is called pleasure. Number four is called sacrifice. Let me take it again. The four pillars upon which love rests on. If you want to know love completely, you must see it expressed in these four dimensions. Number one, passion. It's impossible for love to be there without passion number two commitment the staying power the power to remain number three pleasure anything that has love comes with it pleasure and then number four sacrifice of all of these four the leader as far as describing love is concerned is sacrifice greater love had no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friend are we together now because I wanted to know why God would demand from people. In my work, I remember the first time God gave us an instruction as a ministry. And we emptied our account as a ministry. And many times God had given me this instruction. I, I, I mean, I didn't have a problem giving. But I wanted to know because I wanted to have an understanding. Why does God demand sacrifice from men? I mean, this is something that he has everything. Why does God demand sacrifice? Not just sacrifice of money. But sacrifice of your life, your time, it looks like every time God sees sacrifice, he takes the individual seriously. Hallelujah. And then I began to study on this subject of sacrifice. And when I found it, I rejoiced because I knew that I had found my way out of many things, including mediocrity, including pain, including financial calamities. I want to share with you this. This is very important. 
there are four things sacrifice the demand to give every time God demands that an individual gives resources proceeds of your strength your time your energy what is his goal behind it I want to tell you this sacrifice and giving generally is one of the ways that we conquer idolatry and materialism listen to me every once in a while in your life God will demand something within you and the goal is not really the money he did not kill Isaac later on but Isaac had died in the heart of Abraham are we together the only way to deal with idolatry and the, the plague of materialism is that every once in a while God will demand something from you something that rattles the place the, the place that materialism wants to take in your life I have found this to be a healthy way of living God will always demand as a way of checkmating idolatry do you know why because you see because of the works of our hands we place value on anything that we dissipate intellectual energy energy in terms of time energy in terms of whatever to have for instance if i give you a hundred thousand as a gift you can easily give it because no effort it came as a gift but if you receive a salary of a hundred thousand a hundred thousand as a gift and a hundred thousand as salary are not the same because on one is no effort no labor no nothing on another is reward it's a product of your creativity your passion if god asks you to give the two hundred thousand, he will want the one that is a, a not just a gift are we together is the same principle isaac used for jacob he had cattle at the back of his house but he said my son i want to bless you i'm coming there but go to the field far to the field don't receive it as a gift from anybody i'm not in lack it's a principle go to the field go and use your effort catch the wild animal bring it back home cook it let me eat that one my soul will be delighted and i will bless you for a long time it did not make sense to me i mean you can imagine isaac was there rebecca was there it was her that ended up preparing what he ate he would have simply said my wife i am hungry please go and make something for me it is never about money it is never about releasing whatever it is is something is a spiritual principle and Esau went down and got this and returned and he made it himself the mother did not help him make it the father wanted to eat the one that he made by himself he said doing that will delight my soul and I want to release something upon you every time God instructs believers to come with sacrifices either of time energy and resources I want you to know that is beyond God wanting to impoverish you God does not reduce people are we together now God does not reduce people it is inaccurate understanding of givings like sacrifice that reduces people or manipulative teachings of such and then people innocently respond to it and they find out that there is no harvest I remember the first time God placed as a ministry when this instruction came one week after that God did something in this ministry that to God be the glory I mean it was it was a miraculous manifestation of his hand we began to see the hand of God in mysterious ways you can imagine those days in Zaria I mean not to demean the region but I mean how much really can come out of there to run a ministry that was increasing over 95 percent of the support the giving that was coming was coming outside of Zaria and even outside of the nation I began to see strange manifestations of God God speaking to people and instructing them come and bless this ministry come and do this come and do that and then that statement that God is not a man that he should lie truly truly my life began to change I had studied about finances I had studied about liftings I had studied about the blessing once in a while God will come to me do you know there were times when I would sense 
that there was danger around my life around the ministry and every time this this was it was my my consistent work with god every time they looked like it was a some kind of danger i would go to the lord in prayer and suddenly he would begin to prompt me bring a sacrifice and i'm saying lord this one now what for again i i'm sensing danger and God would demand something from me. The third thing that made God, I noticed in my walk with God, every time I was ending a season, my birthdays, end of year, God will always demand a sacrifice. Then I began to study these patterns. That this thing, and for every time I obeyed God, God did something miraculous in my life. There were times that I would pray and pray for hours. What is this thing I'm sensing? There is a negative spiritual cloud. It's like, it's like some kind of plot by darkness. And when I'm done praying, I will still sense that turbulence and unrest. But the moment a sacrifice goes, it's like calm returns. And then I began to learn that these are spiritual patterns. And it is because the saints do not know it. They have been cheated in many regards. Are we learning now? This is very powerful. Now write this down. Your sacrifice unto God is number one, an expression of love. Your sacrifice unto God is an expression of love and value for him above all things. Please write it down. Your sacrifice unto God is an expression of your love for him and the value that you have placed on him above all things. We usually invest our time and our resources around the things that matter to us most. So when God places a demand upon you to give, especially sacrifice whether of your time of your resources among the many things that he seeks ladies and gentlemen hear me is to test your love for him to see if truly he is exalted in your life above every other thing it is easy to sing it be lifted be exalted it is easy to say you are number one in my life but the real proof of god's position in your life is tested in the place of sacrifice anything you cannot give god is above you Anything you cannot give God is above you. An uncomfortable truth. Anything you cannot give God. If I cannot give God my car, my house, my money, it is above me. The meaning of that is that that is what I am worshipping. One of the ways to choose between God and mammon is to use one to serve the other. You can use God to serve mammon. Or you can use mammon to serve God. Unfortunately, many have used spirituality to serve money. Preaching because of money. Doing all of this because desperate for it. It doesn't matter. They compromise on spirituality because they want money. When God demands from you to sacrifice, what he's doing is he's helping you maintain his position as the highest priority in your life. Let me tell you the truth. Most believers do not know how much they are attached to things. Materialism, I have taught you, is not just having materials. You don't have to be rich to be materialistic. An obsession for money, for things that is above your passion for God. Claiming you love God is cheap talk. It is when you are able to lay down that is proof of love. Imagine if the father kept saying, I love you. My creation, I love you. Sons and daughters, I love you. But he said, let me demonstrate that love. He sent his son. And when Jesus walked upon the earth, he died a gruesome death. And he did that with joy in his heart as proof that he loved us. Now, we know indeed that we've been loved by God because of the cross. The cross reminds us that God truly loves us. Is someone learning? Someone looks at me and says, Apostle, I want to love God the way you love God. Let me tell you the truth. My life has been episodes of laying down everything in my life. That's how I ascended that height of love. When it has to do with the business of love is beyond just passion. You can roll on the ground and stand up and you are far from him. It says they draw nigh to me with their lips. Is that in your Bible? But their hearts are far. There are many prayer warriors who don't love God. They can pray. 
There are many people who sing love songs. There are many preachers who preach love songs. But the moment it has to do with laying down something that costs you, the king said, I will not give God anything that does not cost me. Hallelujah. Truly, you want God to become your priority? It is impossible to become a lover of God without going through the school of sacrifice. He will demand something from your life that can become an idol. Number two, why does God demand from us sacrifice? Your sacrifice is an expression of honor. Your sacrifice to God is an expression of honor. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30, the B part. 1 Samuel chapter 2. It says, wherefore, I, I'm, I'm really concerned about the B part, but now the Lord said, be it far from me, for them that honor me, this is so true, I will honor, but they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God honors every, God loves everybody, but not everybody has the same place as far as his dealings is concerned. No, there are people God places priority upon because they have learned to lay down everything for his namesake. Sacrifice is an expression of honor for God. Honor for God. Honor for God. You cannot see him. But when he demands that you bring a sacrifice, let me tell you sincerely, it is because God wants to test how much you honor him. To honor a man means to regard the person. Look at me please, ladies and gentlemen. When they tell you a personality is coming to your house, someone you place high regard on, what's the first thing that you do? You make sure that you fix your house. Sometimes you will need to quickly clean things up and make sure that you set table, you bring the best of your plates, the best of the meals that you can find. You make everything, you make the room conducive and you know, very, very excellent. And then when the person comes, you are happy and the person sees your display of honor, especially when they recognize it and commend you for it. That glow on your face, it makes every sacrifice worth the while. Many do that to men. They do that to politicians. They do that to Apostle Joshua Selman, but they will not do that to God. No. How do you love a man's creature more than the creator himself? How do you respect the creature more than the creator? You see that now? Honor. When you honor a man, you will give and give sacrificially and it does not matter. Hallelujah. There are people who certain visitors come to them and say, I want to go somewhere and they literally will cancel their schedule for the day and say, I am driving you. I'm going with you wherever it is. I'm going with you as a proof of honor. But many would not do that for God. Those who know, understand sacrifice are those who express honor to the Lord. Now listen, number three, sacrifice I wrote here is one of the mysteries that control divine intervention. When God demands a sacrifice from you, it is because it is he wants you to engage one of the mysteries in the kingdom that controls divine intervention intervention in first kings chapter 18 from verse 30 to 33 divine intervention it is true elijah said to all the people come near unto me remember elijah and the prophets of bell he's about to command fire god wants to demonstrate his lordship over the land that he's king of kings and to stop god's people from being oppressed as a result of jezebel and her prophets but it came on the wings of sacrifice the bible says he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down next verse the bible says elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob unto whom the word of the lord came saying Israel shall be my name. Uh -huh. The Bible says, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. 33. The Bible says, and he put wood in order and cut the bullocks. I mean, what do the animals have to do with the presence of God coming down? I understand the altar being set after the tribes of Israel. 
I mean, what is God looking for with bullocks? And he cut them into pieces. He laid them on the wood and he filled them with water and then he called upon the God of Israel. And the Bible says the God of Israel answered by fire. Fire came and licked up everything. Can I tell you the truth? One of the mysteries of divine intervention is sacrifice. When things go bad in your life, when it is time to turn certain things around, sacrifice is one of those mysteries that has brought people out of financial calamities, brought people out of health conditions. I remember years ago, Oro Roberts of Blessed Memory, listening to him teach, he was teaching in a Benihin meeting and he said one time he was sick. It was so mysterious. The doctors had said he was going to die. They said, Dr. Roberts, we're sorry, you may not leave. And he called one of his secretaries and said, how much do I have in so so, -so account? And when they said it, he said, transfer everything, I think, to some mission agency or so. And the people were surprised, said, do as I've instructed. And as soon as they did that, a miracle happened that night. And Ora Roberts would live many, many more years before he would later pass on to be with the Lord. Sacrifice. I have practiced this as a principle and commanded many supernatural interventions. There are business people who do not know this principle. There are church leaders who do not know this principle. There are many people who do not know how to provoke in divine intervention using the key of sacrifice. It's a spiritual principle that has been manipulated by demons. You go and meet somebody, some herbalist somewhere, and say, you know what? I need this political position. I need you to upturn some court case. I need whatever it is. And they will look at you and take a deep breath and say, are you ready to do everything we say to do? This thing you are seeing, or this possibility is doable. But are you ready for the condition? And sometimes they give all kinds of ungodly conditions. Bring someone you love the most. Your wife, your son, your daughter, whatever it is. And people go that far to do some of those things. And you find out that doors keep opening for them in ways that you cannot imagine. Sacrifice is a mystery that controls divine intervention. Number four. Why does God demand sacrifice from the saints? Are you ready? Because it is one of the mysteries for accessing the sworn blessing. Please write it down. You need to hear this one. Sacrifice is one of the mysteries for accessing the sworn blessing. There is something called the sworn blessing. Genesis 22, 15 to 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, what is the, this thing? Thou hast not withheld. That is what you have done. You have been so lavish in bringing your future, bringing your all, your only son that you had to wait about 25 years to have him. Because thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, he says, this is what I have sw I've sworn to you, that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to believe that there is something called the sworn blessing. We also call it the commanded blessing. Numbers 23, 19 and 20. It's important that I teach this so that many people will understand that sacrifices are not just about dropping something that costs you. It is your understanding that gives value to what you are doing. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent had he not said and shall he not do it? Had he not spoken and shall he not make it good? The next verse please. Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he had blessed and I cannot reverse it. There are things that God brings upon the lives of people on account of their diligence, on account of their sacrifice. 
God will say things to them through men that sticks to their life forever. Hallelujah. I wish I had the liberty to share with you some testimonies. Honestly, this principle has worked wonders in my life. One time the Lord gave a, an instruction to sow a seed as a ministry. I remember after that time, God began to open phenomenal doors. Phenomenal doors. And then God came to me one time and gave me an instruction to give a very huge sacrifice. And it was at that time, it was something that was really costly. Do you know, when I did that, there was a gift that God planted in my heart. That gift of joy. The peace of God that nothing, that money. It's not always about money multiplying, no. There are some things money cannot buy. You've heard my story that one time, many years ago, you know, um, I had one, I had an issue with, with, with the bank, you know, my account was hacked that time. And you know, the little I had then, everything, everything just went like that. Tried to put in my ATM, the thing did not work. And that was the end of it. I remember by the, the you know, the, the following Monday, went to the bank, ah, you know, the manager and the things, they were saying, ah, what is all this going on now? What is, you know, what is going on? And they now said, all the people who were staying with me will have to come and write reports and all, you know, those things. I said, no, 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 no. These people are innocent. They have no business with what has happened. They said, well, this is what we do. They have to call our office in Lagos. Cut this long story short. I was there having the meeting. God is my witness. And then the Lord spoke to me. True story. And he said, my son, what are you doing here? In my mind, I was saying, what am I doing here? My money just disappeared I'm, and I'm there finding what? True story. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. I mean, I need to find out what is going on here. And then the Lord spoke to me. I remember that is this your money or is my money? And I said, Lord, you are the Lord of everything. And the Lord asked me to get up from that meeting and walk out and go away. And that was the end of it. I told them, you know what? This case is over now. Oh, no, 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 no. Our integrity. I said, that's not my business. I'm on my way out. The owner of my life and includes everything has demanded that I walk away. Case closed. I mean it before the God of heaven. I walked out of that place. It was not a small money. Oh. And the peace that surpasses all understanding. That was where I truly received the gift of peace. There are some things that you can never have until the realm you get into the realm of sacrifice. Peace, joy. These are things a job cannot give. These are things money cannot buy. I remember walking and I was just singing to the Lord, telling him how much I love him. And I meant it from my heart. I knew I was not lying because it had been tested. It wasn't God that did that, but just the fact that he could instruct me to get up and leave something and I, I did. That was it. Hallelujah. God began to multiply this ministry. God began to show mercy. And I will tell you one testimony for your hearing. One day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, from today I will start raising men to bless you. Not bless the ministry. I will start raising men to bless you. I was praying, I still remember, just walking around praying in the spirit. Occasionally I would, I would check my phones. And I remember that time an alert came. I had never received, you know, a lump sum of that kind of money it just came to and i was saying what in the world is this i said let me let me calm down maybe it's a mistake somebody made before i touch something and later on they come to harass me and, and so on and so forth yes it was a real estate company i remember the name that sent it a real estate company three months later the same amount was sent again Three months later, the same amount was sent again. And that was all. For the next one year, at least 50 of those kind of amounts, just that very amount like that. I said, God, what are you doing? What is the name of this? What is the meaning of this thing you are doing? He that honors me, I will honor. You see that? But he that despises me, please listen. 
I'm not telling you something somebody taught me. This is my life. God began to open doors for koinonia in a strange and miraculous way. I mean, people will call from all over the world, literally, and be patient for days. We had to start reaching the bank to say, listen, you need to help us spread our platforms for giving because people want to give. Can you imagine someone will be disturbing you for over two weeks and say, I've not given till now. I've asked you people to do this. I need to give my $500, my $1,000. I tried. People even became victims of scammers, but they were still patient. How does someone keep begging you and saying he wants to give? People started traveling. I'm not exaggerating. Traveling from across the globe. They will come inconvenience themselves, land in Lagos, take a flight, come through Kaduna and come down to Zaria. Not for prayer. They were instructed by God. We came all the way from America, from this place, from England and God said we should come and do this. Others will come and give and say, God said we should collect the ministry's account number. Let's verify so that when we go back, let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. on me now I was learning something about God I was seeing in my life the things that Ora Robert spoke about I was seeing in my life some of the things that God's general said so I can do ministry with integrity without manipulating people how will you call people to come and fund what you are doing without manipulating them. You are not the only preacher on earth. How will they suddenly turn their attention to you and bless you? I had found my key. Gather my saints unto me that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah. The next time the Lord will come to me, he gave me an instruction. He said, I'm going to be sending you to God's servant. Prepare this when I send. I rejoice in my heart. Now I had seen it work. I know that it works. That morning, I remember waking up and God just told me today is the day with joy. I got everything, got the next flight. I was on my way to Lagos, went to Canaan land, went to do whatever I had to do. When I finished by the grace of God, with joy in my heart, I knew that God is not a man. Those who don't know this are the ones talking against it. When you have lived in the reality of these principles and you become a living proof. If you are faking it and pretending it, you will be lying till you become poor. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? After I did, I remember I was going to get into the car. And the Lord asked me to, he said, come out, place your hand on that ground. I placed my hand on that ground and he said, my son, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. The overflow anointing. The overflow anointing. I remember those days, I wrote out, if I recall, the name of 10 mission agencies. 10 mission agencies. God gave me one of the instructions. I'm sharing some of these things. Some of you are hearing it for the first time. And God gave me heavy instructions. I mean, literally, almost like everything to those mission agencies. I did that with joy in my heart. And I stepped into another level of the help of God. And I said, if this is how God works, I conquer greed in my life. No, I will not withhold. I know there is a difference between waste. If you are doing this principally with money as your end you will be poor did you hear what i said let me tell you how it works god must be your focus not money now most people what they do is like a spiritual transactional bribe as they are holding one thousand in their mind now they are thinking ten thousand who else do i bribe since i cannot go to someone to scam me let me come and drop it in an offering basket hoping that god will suddenly double it overnight God gives you money, but he gives you more than what money can buy. 
when your heart let me tell you the missing ingredient many believers give but their heart is on carnal returns not God not God not God not God God has given me many very dangerous instructions financial instructions that I've done that sometimes I thank God I'm the only one that knows about it because I wonder who, who ever believed that I did such a thing let me tell you with all due respect most anyway God knows oh there are things you do bar that touches the heart of God I made up my mind that I was going to prosper myself and that I was going to raise a people who love God but people who have conquered materialism I hate carnality material is this obsession for money but at the same time I also hate poverty that people should not just be economically ridiculed by life there are many other aspects with productivity creativity I've taught you relationship value my goodness but sacrifice is an irrefutable spiritual principle when God comes to you he comes to bless you he really comes to bless you I don't know how many episodes of those demands God has made from my life there are some of them that have become covenant seasons my birthdays koinonia you know end of year and all of this right now as I'm standing now he's told me my own and I came here with joy because I know that my life is about to shift God, there is nothing that God demands from you. Please hear me. I'm speaking to the global family. That is for his benefit. No. If God is looking for money, he will not talk to you. No. How much can you give him? You see that now? I need to teach you so that it's not just about dropping seeds. It's a wrong narrative and a wrong mentality. And sometimes I confess that we pastors, maybe it's because of the physical money, Everybody does not care. It doesn't matter whether people understand or not. Just bring it. You bring it without revelation. I assure you, it will not work. Truly, not many people will tell you this. You give just as a, as a bribe unto God. You will not get anything. Your attention must be on Jesus and the integrity of his word. And then allow him surprise you and do things for you that you cannot imagine sacrifice that's what brought some of us to this this level that God has helped us by grace and by the spirit koinonia will never be doing the things that we are doing now by the privilege of God's grace no this one is beyond the realm of tithes and offering there are things you do to touch the heart of God all blessings come from God through men to men but those men don't come on their own there are mysteries that bring them to you. Jesus did not call the three wise men, the Magi, to come to him. He was a baby. But there was something that was done in the spirit on account of an instruction. And the Bible says the Magi rose holding gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As a baby, they did not consider that he was a baby. They worshipped him and they dropped those things. This thing does not happen because you are a man of God. It does not happen just because you are, you know, whatever it is. No. Hallelujah. There are sacrifices I've made for the next level of koinonia. There are sacrifices I've made for the next level of my life. This ministry you see, and with all due respect, without, without being, being, you know, mistaking me for pride, we stand today upon sacrifice it is not what we do once and for all it has become my lifestyle nobody lives what works there is he that scattered and yet increases and i have seen all kinds of things that god has done sometimes it's not safe to share certain testimonies you know but just for you to know that this mysterious god there is nothing in my life that will ever make me give up on the mystery of sacrifice it has kept God's position intact in my heart by dethroning material things you know you get to a point where God begins to help you and let me tell you the truth the tendency for material things get into your heart and then God demands that they go and as soon as they leave his position remains intact in your heart 
there is nothing in my life today and I stand, I'm speaking to the globe. In the name of Jesus, there is nothing in my life today as I stand before you that I cannot give God. Nothing. The Lord will come to me years ago and say, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I'm not sure I understood what he was saying. Now I know I did not understand what he was saying. This is an opportunity for someone right now. The end of year sacrifice is not a ritual. By the grace of God, we have demonstrated a level of integrity that is, that is clear enough for you to know as individuals and as a ministry. You see that now. By the privilege of God's grace, we have raised sons and daughters in this ministry that have capacity financially. If we're in need of money, there are people we put together. We will not come and talk to a globe like this. This is an opportunity. This is no manipulation. God has been faithful to me as a person. God has been faithful. It is an insult, honestly, and a mockery to manipulate God's people for money. Not at this level. No. What you did not do before when you did not have, it's not today that God has shown mercy that you come to manipulate people. This is why I said, don't give yet. Allow me to teach you. I have seen what God has done in my life today. Hallelujah. I shared with you about a group of, you know, some real estate people who came and met me. They first came to bless me with a property and said, Apostle, we have a covenant with God that anywhere we build an estate on earth, we must keep a house for you there. How do you explain this? How many houses can I stay in in my lifetime? I've not even seen them. I don't even know where they are. Don't envy you and don't be angry. You. The secret is this thing I'm teaching you. Sacrifice. Sacrifice is not all about money. How about access to kings? How about access to nobles? You don't just rise like that. Today I've stood before kings. I've stood before presidents. I've stood before nobles. There are things that have happened in my life today. God has taken me light years ahead of my contemporaries. I am telling you one secret. It is sacrifice. There are things that you do in the realm of the spirit that speaks to your children and your children's children. Remember I told you the story of the women in Joss that I bought sugar cane for, I paid for sugar cane for. And I remember that mama, I still believe that they are not normal human beings. God just orchestrated a system to test me to see me too i came to i didn't have much but i insisted and i remember them blessing me and that woman how holding having clothes that are not nothing no comeliness and she said my son forever walk upon gold walk upon gold walk upon gold we are able to do the things we do today because we have engaged these principles I don't want to tell you the bill and the budget for what was spent in the United Kingdom. Some of you will not even believe it. You probably will not sleep this night if you hear it. I tell you sincerely, even if you are successful. We are not teaching cunningly devised fables here. It is true. And then God says, don't collect any offering. No offering, no giving, nothing. Don't talk about money. I want to rewrite something about the church that the church is not a weak and beggarly system waiting for the world. No, there is honor and dignity if we understand his ways. If we understand his ways. Hallelujah. The bills that it takes to run, if Koinonia was depending just on tithes and offering and all of that, it would be a risk to close this meeting now. For one month, <laughs> May my God change your life from this night. May my God change your life from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. When God brings you to a realm of supplies, it takes away distraction from your life. Please believe it and don't let anybody mislead you. One of the most distracting things in people's lives is this economic thing. There are pastors bleeding. Do you know there are many pastors that teach giving, but they don't give. This thing does not respect title. Whether you are called apostle, if you don't practice it, it will not work. It will not work. I never go to see any of our fathers of faith like that with my hand empty. No, I do that with understanding. And sacrifice for me is a delight someone. And last year, God came again with a word for me. 
oh i'm ready to step you into a new season and then he gave a demand for koinonia to do his sacrifice for koinonia and he was with joy and then when i i was done hearing that one he now said what have you instructed koinonia to give you would double it and give that is your sacrifice i would have cried if i did not know god i would have rebuked that spirit with fasting and prayer but i know his voice when he comes it is for your own good these are the ladders by which we climb in don't just admire people and wish and also talk things you don't know behind some of this glamour you see is blood dripping on the altars of men are we together now there are men that god has sworn certain blessings on there is nothing the devil can do no probably the only thing he can do is to get them not to be saved and since they are saved they are under his feet forever sacrifice is a powerful mystery there are certain kinds of anointings that don't come into your life until at the instance of sacrifice hmm. hallelujah i have stepped into certain levels of grace certain levels of power because i went to pray and fast for more of god but he gave an instruction in addition to the prayer in addition to the fasting in addition to learning keys from materials you must release certain things and I obeyed him foolishly and stepped into certain levels of power. This is the side that most people do not know about ministry. There are certain immunities that you create on account of sacrifice. If not, some of us will probably have died. You cannot do the kind of thing some of us, I'm saying this with all humility. There are things if you have not touched in the spirit, you do what I'm doing, you will not reach one month. I tell you sincerely, you will just die like a chicken. You heard the story when we started Koinonia, that they brought a charm to overflow three. Somewhere there. It was even the, the, the facility managers that called my attention and said, there's something like this. I said, can you imagine? Oh no. There are people who have already died. You don't die twice. Hmm. Hallelujah. To travel around dismantling the gates of darkness age-long causes that have held people for decades and you just come and with one shout and then go scot free no sir if you're a minister of the gospel here please listen let me tell you this is what is not taught in church this is why most people don't have power again they do not know that there are things in the kingdom that are not gifts it comes on account of sacrifice. I was praying, preparing for today. And I said, Lord, what would you have me give? It is everything I have is yours. And God comes to me again. I love that. I mean, whatever he comes, whenever he comes, for me, it is joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. If he never rewards me, it is an honor to bless him. It is an honor to give. But for sure, you can live the level you are now. Listen, couples, hear me just believing that is a job and promotion that will bring you to certain realms you may die of pain young people let me talk to you there are many people today you may never be able to build your house by yourself on salary i'm not a bearer of bad news except you want to live a life of death carrying trouble sorrow you see young people 30 31 the person is looking like 50 years because certain things are on his neck I show you a more excellent way. There is a way in the spirit. There is a way by which men rise. There are those following from across the globe. Trusting God for liftings. Trusting God for open doors. Trusting God to end certain circles. Especially if you come from a family where things are not working. Don't sit down and say one day go better. Honestly speaking it will not change ministries can quantum leap to a new level businesses can quantum leap to a new level it is true this is why god places a demand upon us that we bring an end of year sacrifice and announcing that if not because god has set it as an ordinance in this ministry i will have no business asking you to do this because number one i love you and I rather go and flog it with God. But again, I love you too much for you to remain where you are. 
there are people who have engaged this and they have risen to heights unimagined there are things that God has done in my life today. I'm not a very emotional person. But sometimes when I think about these things, my cry is not just because of the blessings that God has brought. My cry is that what would have happened to me if I did not know these things? Or what would have happened to me if I joined the ignorant people saying it does not matter? Probably only God knows the kind of bills that Koinonia would have paid. Can I tell you, this ministry has zero debt. We are not owing anybody dead or alive. Zero. Zero. Number one, now with all due respect to financial practitioners, we do not borrow as a ministry. It's a principle that we do not borrow. Everything, no matter what, is paid for cash. So I, I'm saying this, I, I hope you don't misunderstand me for pride. I'm saying this because God wants to help you. You belong to a ministry that is mysteriously helped by God. There is no reason why you should be in a situation where God cannot help you. No, it's not that. If it takes God waking someone from any nation, God will do it for the sake of this koinonia you are seeing. Yes, sir. When I gave God what he demanded of me the last time, my life stepped into another level. Beyond finances, the anointing. Beyond finances, increased influence. Beyond finances, the gift of good people. You know, sometimes with all due respect, my friends in ministry, sometimes they ask me and say, Apostle, how are you able to bring in the best of people? Worship people, do all of this. I tell them, I don't have the power to call people. You can call and they will not come. There is a voice that your seed has. Your seed can bring quality people to your organization. I'm telling you with all due respect, my dear people, this is how you came. These are mysteries in the kingdom. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. I live in this reality and when it has to do with it, I understand it. You see, let me tell you, abundance is not just having what to eat. Abundance is having enough to fund the program of God and to become a blessing to people without it affecting you. And many people have not gotten to that realm. Don't show me the estates you have. Show me how much you have given towards souls without it affecting you. Then I will say you are rich. Our idea of being rich in church is who has a nice jeep, some jeep somewhere, or some estate somewhere, or some investment somewhere. As much as I appreciate that, that is not the kingdom's way of rating wealth. Your wealth is rated by how much goes from you to the kingdom without it affecting you. And if you have not gotten to that realm, there is still a place to pray. To say, Lord, I'm trusting God for a day, like I told my people, I think it was in Zaria or the leaders, where one person will call and say, what does it take to run Koinonia for one year? And some of you here in the nearest future, I know you have the heart. Believe me. That there are people here who will sign it quietly and say it is over. Nobody should even talk about money. You don't believe that? I told myself years when I could not even buy a good shoe. That a day will come, I will sponsor mission agencies. A day will come, I will not allow one missionary to die under my watch. I can't do everything, but at least let me do something for Jesus. Before you talk to me about finances, show me what you have done for the gospel. If you have not given certain amounts for the gospel, keep quiet. You don't know anything about money. Believe me. I'm not talking about people who have built empires. One flood can come and wipe an estate away, but not the souls that are saved. And souls are expensive. I respect people to the degree to which I see the money they have had committed to the kingdom. I respect the house that we build. I respect the cars. I respect all the, you know, physical things. But from a spiritual standpoint, those things are transitory. They come for your comfort and they go. But what really counts is how much went for the kingdom, for souls, for crusades, to bless lives, to help run the program of God. This is true wealth. And this is where God wants to bring us to. Do you believe what I'm telling you? 
So away from yourself. Just say, I have my one million, my five million, I'm fine. When they say receive, I say, I'm what for? I mean, highest I can give church 100,000 or 200,000. It's not about the money. It's about loving Jesus enough to see that his program does not stop. Loving Jesus enough to say, Father, if you are trusting people, let me be your treasurer. Your last one failed you. Let me be your treasurer. And then you will lay up gold as dust in a way that not even you can explain. And it has nothing to do with being a preacher. Businessmen, please, I want you to listen to me. You have tried buying and selling. You have tried transactions. I introduce to you, in addition to what you know, a superior spiritual strategy. Show God you honor him, even in your business, and watch what he does. Show God you honor him in your ministry, and watch what he does. Show God you honor him as a family, and watch what he does. This thing has equal value in America, equal value in Canada. Don't tell me it is because of where I am. I'm in some village somewhere. Territorially, maybe economically, yes, you may not be in a place of advantage. But God can bring help from anywhere. The raven that brought food for Elijah was not where Elijah was. But it knew where Elijah was. This lifting started right from Zaria. It's not just Abuja here. No. I remember years ago when I was teaching my precious people. I taught them to love the Lord. From that, from when you looked at their life those days. You will be wondering, how will these people rise? Who will come and help them? Please don't play with the word of God. You are here wondering, I don't know anybody. Nobody knows me on the internet. You think because you are known on the internet, it means you prosper. Many popular people are poor and broke. Just because people know you does not mean you have money. Or you have help, generally speaking. No. Impact is different from popularity. This is my life. There is nothing I cannot give God. I am telling you this. There is nothing. But he always outgives me. He has refused to let me give more than him because he's the giver of all gifts. He gave so much, he gave his son. What can I give him that will surprise him? What can I give him that will make him say, I'm challenged? You want to see the hand of God? Learn the mystery of sacrifice. Believe me. Learn the mystery of sacrifice. I have had times, you can ask my protocol, when we are in the plane, I'm trying to catch some sleep and someone comes to the plane to, to tap me and says, Apostle, it's a privilege to see you. And he goes to reach out and brings out money in a plane. We are going and minding my business, going for a meeting. In 50 minutes, you can become wealthier than somebody for the next five years because God decided to help you. If you don't believe in Ebenezer, you are wasting your time. How did the person know you will be in the plane? And the person is discussing. How can I have your account number? No, no, it's not necessary. Don't worry. Let's just pray. How they find it, I don't even know. I fought, up, I fought finance department for a long time to make sure people don't have access to my account number. But now there's nothing I can do about it again. So that there is nothing that is suggestive of manipulation. Listen, I... God has not helped us financially because we are talking to millions of people. He has helped us because we obey him. Preacher, you will not get money because you are teaching a crowd. No. They will leave you as a preacher and go and give the person obeying God. Did you hear what I said? Being a preacher is not the reason why you are blessed. Being obedient to the principles of God's truth. We are going to pray. The end of year sacrifice is an opportunity for God to visit people. It's an opportunity for God to change the stories of men. Koinonia Global, listen. I'm speaking to believers. I'm speaking to our global family. You are tired of where you are spiritually. Perhaps there's a man of God listening to me and he's saying, Apostle, I need to step into the next season. I need to break out of this territorial limitation that has sat on my destiny. It has never been well with my family. It has never been well with me. This is your opportunity now. I'm about to pray. 
and we are going to give. I'm talking to three groups of people tonight. Number one, I'm talking to Koinonia Global, a family connected by covenant and understanding. Number two, I am talking to believers within the body of Christ that have this understanding. Number three, I'm talking to all who believe what they have heard and are willing to practice this with understanding. It is prophetic prayer plus understanding plus the action of obedience that equals to the rewards that come from sacrifice. You see where many people have been missing it? Some of you may have noticed that if you bring seeds to give me, you just bring it, the protocol will hold you and bring you back so that I will speak a blessing on it before you go because it's not about money. Many people are doing donation. They are not doing this spiritual transaction that makes for your rising. Let your power, power to prosper rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Now, I'm, I'm going to pray and you are going to give. Now, I don't... Uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I did not even inform the people how we're going to do this. We'll just display the account details, unfortunately. I, I'm not sure there's room for people who, are, who came here with their seeds. My apologies, these are not things that we're even used to. You can see that no arrangement was made for all of these things. Usually you would think that there should be offering baskets for this, for those who want to give. But this a sacrifice is not just an offering you are dropping. I'm going to pray. Watch this now. I'm speaking to everyone, business people, men and women of God, Koinonia family, everyone participate in this. Everybody participate in this. Participate in this. Now for your end of year sacrifice, that's the account that is displayed on screen. Naira, USD, you know, um, you know, uh, pound, euro and all of that. And you can call the finance department if you want any help or any guidance, make sure you don't fall prey to scammers. Please wait until I pray. Wait until I pray. Wait until I pray. The moment I pray, you can begin to give our international com um, a family, companies, businesses, individuals. Hallelujah. Father, I've taught your people your principles. I've taught your people your truth. You have changed my life by this mystery. You have turned this ministry around by this mystery of sacrifice. And Father, in the name of Jesus, in the presence of your people, potentially millions of people across the globe listening, they're about to bring their end of year sacrifice. Lord, many are making this sacrifice, trusting you, one for your presence, two for supplies, three for breakthroughs, for divine interventions to shift them to realms and levels in the anointing to take their ministries to levels beyond their imagination lord you have made our lives examples of what obedience can deliver i pray in the name of jesus by this apostolic and prophetic anointing that everyone across the airwaves here on site america canada uk kenya south africa within the 36 states of this federation as many who are hearing and as many who will be hearing the family is hearing the business is hearing the politicians hearing captains of industry men and women you have helped those who are trusting to receive your help i'm praying in the name of jesus let fire fall upon their sacrifices let fire fall upon their sacrifices let fire fall upon their sacrifices in the name of jesus i decree and declare that for everyone who drops any naira dollar whatever currency whatever amount small or great on account of this call in the name of jesus christ between now and the time of resumption 
what God did to me, what God did to this ministry, I pray that my God will do it for you. I say it again, what God did in my life, what God has graciously done in this ministry, may he do it in your life in the name of Jesus. We are still praying. Something is happening to you that will surprise you. I pray for those who are in financial situations now. You've done everything you know to do. I'm praying by this sacrifice. Rise to a new level in the spirit. Man of God, rise to a new level in the spirit. Businessman, rise to a new level of impact. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bring before the Lord struggling families not just in the area of finances that there is a cost that is placed on your family placed on your finances that people don't rise every time they want to rise something brings them down I call upon the God of Jeshurun in the name that is above all names on account of this sacrifice let the blood speak let the blood speak let the blood speak let the blood speak for someone here, let me prophesy upon you. You will lay gold as dust. I say it to you, you will lay gold as dust. Listen, one of the things that sacrifice brings is the miracle of open eyes. You see, let me tell you, finances, ba, there is a way God opens your eyes to see what people don't see. It says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. That the increase of the earth is for all. And even the king is fed by that which comes to the field. There is a way sacrifice can command your eyes to see something. And what you see will open you to a world of financial possibilities beyond your imagination. This is true. There are people who saw a miracle in the midst of rubbish because God opened their eyes. When God opened the eyes of Hagar, she saw an oasis in the midst of a desert. Until your eyes are open, you will not see. Businessman, hear me. I'm praying for you. Whatever must cause your eyes to open, to see where opportunities are, to see where God has blessed for you, that helps you enter your wealthy place. I pray in the name of Jesus, on account of this sacrifice, may your eyes be truly opened. May your eyes be truly opened. Don't be tired of receiving, no. I want to pray for you. One of the things that sacrifice does is that it gravitates helpers towards you. Most of us right now are like the man in, I think that should be John 5 or so, verse 7 thereabout. Jesus came to him and said, why are you in this condition? And he said, I have no man. This is the challenge with many businesses. I have no man. I have no man as a preacher. I have no man as a business. I have no man as an individual. I want to pray for you strategic quality men strategic quality partners strategic quality helpers receive in the name of jesus christ between now and the end of the year in the name of jesus christ if you respect and understand prophecy then receive this I'm praying for you between now and the end of the year. May the God who lifts men, may the God who lifts men, I'm praying now particularly for your finances. May God do something that surprises your finances. In the name of Jesus. Some of you on account of what God will do from tonight, you will build your house in a matter of months. I say it to you, you will build your house in a matter of months. You will finance the gospel in a way that will not even affect you. Now hear me, 
by reason of this sacrifice anyone here who has been held under the, the slavery of materialism the slavery of money you are obsessed about money obsessed about material things to the point you can kill because of money let this giving crucify that appetite once and for all let every obsession negative ungodly satanic lust driven obsession for money and material resources you can follow any man just because of money you can go anywhere just because of money compromise on your faith because of money i'm saying it again let your giving tonight crucify that loss forever hear me anyone here who has been involved in any dirty or satanic practice hear me by reason of this prayer tonight i'm praying for you what you need is repentance first not giving you know what i'm talking about practices and businesses that kill steal and destroy so that you have money it's not about money it's about the salvation of your soul and the enthronement of jesus i'm praying for you don't when you destroy people and boast that i'm a rich man you are programming disaster that will throw you away it's important that people understand that men of god are not just obsessed about money and anybody it doesn't matter where the money comes from just because you bring something to church no what is demonic is demonic what is satanic is satanic there is godly money and there is satanic demonic money are we together just because it is naira and kobo does not mean that it should be and 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 with all due respect ministers of the gospel must respect the altar of god don't let anybody come you know that this person is some confirmed whatever and just bring the money because we need to run ministry no let's serve god with integrity are we together when people come from dirty practices what they need is love and repentance not collecting their money are we together I'm praying for you for someone your hand has been empty all through this year you have been praying wondering you've not gone down but you have not gone up I pray for you the remaining days in December honestly from the depth of my heart I'm releasing grace and I decree and declare rise to heights unimagined rise to heights unimagined in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to begin to receive we'll just double this with the impartation now one of the greatest gifts of God in my life is wisdom if you lack wisdom you will be poor if you lack wisdom you cannot be a leader I want to release that grace as we close this service you don't have to bring those under the anointing just receive father I stretch my hands upon someone who is in desperate need of the baptism of the spirit of wisdom I stretch my hands upon you like fire from heaven receive right now an impartation of the spirit of wisdom please help them take that grace right now take that grace right now wisdom that causes you to excel wisdom that causes you to triumph in the name of Jesus Christ Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom rest on me, rest on me. Oh, Don't worry, you will give. Just receive. This is very important. 
in the name of Jesus some of you are too slow in life and destiny it is the reason why opportunities pass you the keenness of spirit to maximize moments you don't have it I pray for you it's called the grace for speed let it rest upon someone right now that you will never lose opportunities you will never abort opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ receive the grace for speed right now receive the grace for speed right now hallelujah I was having a discussion earlier today and my attention was drawn to a gentleman in this nation who had accomplished so much I mean this gentleman's awards were displayed like this and yet nobody knows him and I said how can somebody have this many awards and not known and then I remembered there is a grace for visibility if that grace is not on you you can be as skillful all you can you can be as knowledgeable all you can nobody will know you are there there are preachers there are ministries that desperately need this grace there are businesses today that based on your level of competence you should be working directly with the federal government because you carry all it takes to be competent but the grace for visibility is not there who is ready to receive tonight in the name of Jesus the grace that makes men know you are there and call for you to come from the back to the front is called the grace for visibility to every believer whose heart is open to receive receive that grace now in the name of Jesus receive that grace now in the name of Jesus receive that grace now in the name of Jesus the grace for visibility gives you elevated platforms you always find yourself in elevated platforms that can give you room to serve Jesus or to serve your value in a way that makes you honored I'm praying for you again every shame and reproach everything that has not displayed your full potential for the nations to see and know to place a demand upon you I decree and declare let this grace bail you out now hallelujah please don't be tired though this is our last service I shared something in in Zaria that I, I want to just reiterate as I speak over your life there is a real grace called the power to prosper but it does not work the way most people know it most people think the power to prosper is about money not at all the power to prosper has nothing to do with money it only brings finances as part of the things it commands the power to prosper is the grace that makes men to advance in spite of limiting challenges if you do not have the power to prosper you will never go forward any obstacle upon you will keep you you know how the power to prosper works it works in three folds number one the first assignment of the power to prosper is to alter your understanding it gives you a superior approach to life are we together now the first place it influences is your understanding number two is your productivity the works of your hands then number three direction so that you commit your energy and resources in the right places this is how it works every time we talk about the power to prosper in church most people are thinking is the power to make more money no there are people who have money and do not have the power to prosper the power to prosper speaks in your life when a man carries the power to prosper finance is only one of the least things that comes in response to it it is a natural reaction to carrying that grace when the power to prosper comes upon you it works upon your mind you are able to build systems and structures that move your ministry your organization dexterity and excellence is the signature of the power to prosper more than finances 
most leaders don't have the power to prosper that's why they fail when storms come economic storms political storms one of the persons who had the power to prosper in the bible is called daniel you call it an excellent spirit It's called the power to prosper he excelled through the reign of several kings and nobody could bring him down now you understand the song because this is what you are about to receive for many of you, when you say the power to prosper, your mind means the power to make 10 naira become 50 naira. And it is true, it worked for that. But it is too carnal a, a, a basis for receiving. The power to prosper has nothing to do with money. It is capacity that empowers you. Your mind, your hand, and your feet. Your mind giving you superior illumination. It causes you to see life from a plane of a victor. And then your hands become productive. Excellence, mastery, competence. Everything your hand touches comes to gold. You excel in ministry. You excel in business. They put you as a leader. The power to prosper will fish you out from the ground and bring you to the front. And then direction. No wastage of energy. Everything turns to gold because you are directed by God. I'm praying for someone again. In the name of Jesus, let the power to prosper. Now you understand. I declare, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. Rest upon your business. Rest upon your ministry. Rest upon your job. Rest upon your children. Rest upon your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power to prosper is the antidote for failure. When you fail and you are stagnated, when mountains refuse to move, it is because you lack the power to prosper. The signature of the power to prosper, excellence, dexterity, advancement regardless. He said, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. This ministry has not been without hurdles. My life has not been without hurdles. But the power to prosper will make you to quote this scripture with confidence. Now thanks be to God, which causeth us always, always is a key expression, always. Challenges are not unusual, but defeat, no, 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 no. Now let me pray. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me, rest on me. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me, rest on me. Signs and wonders are important. They help you reveal God to your world. When your life is ordinary, it is not worthy of admiration. It has to be always supernatural, always extraordinary. And that is the assignment of signs and wonders. That your life becomes a living epistle, a book that is open, that compels everybody to read it. Written in your life, written through the manifestation of signs and wonders, are the manifold possibilities of God as captured within your life. I pray for you. By this impartation, let an ordinary life come to an end. Let an average life come to an end. Let a life that excels, a life that reveals Jesus in a more superior dimension, let it rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now we're ready to give. Father, to everyone who is about to give now, whether here or online, I decree and declare in the name that is above all names, as you lay down your seeds, your sacrifices, let this be the beginning of a new day. I stand in partnership with all the graces that we have so lavishly received from the fathers of faith, and in the name of Jesus, under this corporate grace, I'm praying, as God has helped us, let it, let it walk in your life. The rod of Elisha will not fail in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Now, for those, um, here's how we'll do it. We may not allow people to come. That will be too rowdy. The worship team, I'll just give us two, three minutes so that those who already, I see people holding their seats. So ushers, you will just move around and then we'll display the accounts. We'll do that just for the next two, three minutes. You'll receive some instructions and then I speak over your life and we're done. Hallelujah. Very, very quickly. So those who have the seats, ushers, you may, you may just move to your seats or move around the, the rows. Just be patient and wait for an usher. Drop your sacrifice. And those online, the accounts are there. Very quickly, let's make that fast so that we're done in the next two to three minutes. Go ahead. Yes, please. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me. Rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me. Rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me. Rest on me. See, begin to speak over your life. Begin to speak over your destiny. I'd like you to begin to tell the Lord the one thing you want him to do in your life please don't keep quiet on account of this sacrifice please mention one area that you are trusting God to visit it doesn't even have to be financial maybe housing maybe your children maybe your health you are at the point of dying perhaps your finances perhaps a job go ahead perhaps ministry perhaps your business you are trusting to know him more to see him revealed in a higher dimension Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. Don't just give. Pray. Lord, you come through for me in this area, that area. Go ahead. Declare. You have given. Sakate pekate bragada balakata fraska bananda kashada dias. 
Lord, come through for me. In the name of Jesus, you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I decree and declare by your power, decree and declare by your spirit, I will become a living manifestation of this desire fulfilled. Are you praying? Speak to the Lord in one minute. We're still praying one minute. Whether you are praying from the US, Canada, UK, Kenya, Malawi, Uganda, Ghana, South Africa, Cameroon, anywhere at all, Australia. China, Japan, across the globe. Release your faith and pray and cry. Turn my life around, oh God. Turn my life around, oh God. Turn my life around, oh God. Let it be clear that your word works. Let it be clear that faith works. Let it be clear that sacrifice works. for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed now three very important instructions announcements and instructions that I want you to listen to number one after this service we are closing officially as a ministry on site. Our online platforms will still be functional, very, very functional. All our online social media platforms, all of them, Instagram, YouTube. So make sure that you participate fully. And um, if and when there is any broadcast online, make sure that you participate all through the break. And we'll be having a break for from today 17th and we're going to be resuming officially on the 21st of january 21st of january hallelujah all all over koinonia global we're resuming on the same day so please make sure you connect all our expressions we're resuming on the same day 21st if you'll be alive give jesus a big hand clap <laughs> hallelujah so we have about a month and four days from today. Please make sure you take heed to the instructions that you have received and also do well to insist that you share these teachings with as many people. Go through all the teachings again. From January till now, there are strategic teachings that you may have heard, but probably it has not entered your spirit. So make sure you take advantage of it in the name of Jesus Christ. And to all leaders, um, remember our meeting. We're having our meeting tomorrow as communicated by your heads of department. So please make sure you avail yourself as we have the final meeting for the year. Hallelujah. Now, while standing, let me make the last altar call. Let's present some souls to Jesus Christ as our thank you gift for his faithfulness. There are people here, you came for koinonia. Within this auditorium, outside of this auditorium, let's minimize movement. And you are saying, Apostle, even though our time is stretched, please give me an opportunity. Let me not end koinonia this year without making Jesus Lord of my life. Or you are saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to make everything good with him before you leave. The only guarantee we have is Jesus. Whether you're outside, inside, following from anywhere across the globe, I'm going to make these two calls in one. As I count one to five, very boldly, 
leave your seat and come and stand before me here as we lead you to make that declaration receiving Jesus as Lord of your life I'll begin my counting now do not be afraid don't wait for anybody to come be the first to come one koinonia we're doing this together two come come give us the honor of leading you to Jesus this one last time before we close for the year are you celebrating souls unto the king immortal invisible the only wise God if you're coming please join them very quickly I'll begin the prayer now thank you thank you thank you for making this bold decision thank you for coming thank you for making Jesus Lord of your life hallelujah now for those of you who are in front I want to appreciate you for the boldness to make this decision if you're coming please come join them very quickly I'm about to pray lift your right hand please and say after me as loud as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I declare that I love you I believe you I believe in you I receive you tonight as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever I am your child I go from glory to glory in Jesus name father thank you for these wonderful people their hands are lifted unto you as a sign of surrender they have declared your lordship over their lives I pray in the name of Jesus that you honor these decisions and I pray by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven and we call you bona fide recipients of the life of God from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus the Lord bless you in Jesus name we pray amen and amen please may I request that you move to my right that will be your left there will be counselors very quickly to have a word with you let's honor them as they go a very quick word with you and then you are back to your seat hallelujah